This month, a pair of billionaires plan to begin a new era in civilian space travel. On July 11th, Virgin Galactic founder Richard Branson will join five other passengers on the company's first crewed flight into the edge of space. If all goes according to plan, Branson will be the first billionaire to leave Earth's atmosphere on a spacecraft he helped develop. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos is expected to take a similar trip nine days later. He'll be aboard his company, Blue Origin's new Shepard spacecraft. His brother Mark, Wally Funk, an 82-year-old aviation pioneer, and the yet-to-be-named winner of an online auction will also be on board. For more on all of this, I want to bring in CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood. Hey there, Bill. So the space missions are scheduled to be nine days apart. Tell us a little bit about their similarities and differences. And do you know, are Bezos and Branson feeling uh, competition for being the first out there in the same way that the U.S. and the USSR <laughs> uh, had been vying to be that very first one? Well, I don't know that I'd put it in that class, but uh, I don't think there's any question there's competition. You know, both of their companies, Blue Origin with Jeff Bezos and Virgin Galactic with Richard Branson, are going to be competing for dollars. They're going to be flying passengers to space. Those tickets aren't going to be cheap. And so whoever can bring in the most people makes the most money. Now, Jeff Bezos obviously was the first to say he was going to fly uh, at the end of this month. And then Richard Branson came up a little bit out of the blue and scheduled his flight just in front of Bezos. So I think there's definitely some competition. It's a bit of a race. Uh, we'll see how it all plays out. Now, you asked about similarities and differences. They're both going, as you said, to the edge of space. This is defined as altitudes just above 50 miles. Um, they do it in different ways, though. You know, Branson has designed this very futuristic-looking rocket plane that goes up and glides back to Earth yeah. like an airplane. Uh, the Blue Origin spacecraft is a rocket and capsule, a more traditional thing where the crew rides in a capsule and lands by parachute. But the goal is the same to reach the lower edge of space. Uh, you mentioned those expensive price tags for tickets, and I want to get into that in a little bit. But, uh, but first, I want you to give me just a little bit of perspective, because Branson's Virgin Galactic has been around for 15 years, and they're finally getting their launch now. But I need some context. Is this a long time or a short time, given the technology that they've had to develop? You know, it's interesting you put it that way. Blue Orange has been around since 2000, so they've been in the game now for more than 20 years. Um, it's very difficult. You know, only governments have done this in the past. They're the only agencies in world history that have put people in space. And so this advent of commercial space flight is technologically challenging. Uh, there's all sorts of factors in play that weren't there for when the governments were doing this. They're not taxpayer funded. They're being funded privately, and there have been you know, setbacks along the way. Virgin Galactic lost an aircraft in a 2014 uh, disaster that killed one of the pilots. Uh, they've had to recover from that, build a new spacecraft since then. And Blue Origin's been taking a bit of a, I'll say the hare's approach instead of, I mean, the, the tortoise approach instead of the hare and taking their time, mm -hmm. launching multiple test flights before they put people on board. But, I mean, the, the simple answer to your question is this is not easy. Very few people have ever attempted anything like this. And, uh, and so it's taken some time to get here, but they're there. Yeah. Well, I don't think that with 20 years I'd be able to get there on my own anyway, so I'm not going to cast any judgment about how long it's taken. Um, but, uh, Bill, let's talk a little bit more about the space race uh, in the middle of the Cold War, because coming from that, there were tangible benefits for the American public and, and the world, really. But in this case, do we, the general public, stand to benefit from the current commercial space race? Or, it, or is a more jaded view of this as a, a billionaire pleasure cruise to space really apt? Well, I mean, it's a little bit of apples and oranges, of course, because the Cold War space race was, was reflecting national goals. It was taxpayer-funded. You know, this is a, these are purely commercial ventures. They're in it for the money. They want to make money. But remember, one of the things both companies are doing, they plan to launch real astronauts, like NASA can buy seats on these spacecraft to give astronauts experiments. They're already launching NASA payloads and other research packages. They charge for that. Uh, so there will be benefits down the road. And, of course, just the technology, developing the ability to get low-cost reusable spacecraft up and down repeatedly, uh, it's something that may, in, in the end, filter out into the general economy. Uh, but it's a for-profit operation, so I think you gotta, you got to keep that in perspective when you compare it with what the government did back in the 60s and 70s. 
Well, I was even thinking earlier today, Bill, about when uh, commercial aviation, just being able to travel in an airplane mm -hmm. from one point to another, that initially that was only for the upper echelons of society, and now all of us are able to uh, to board um, an airplane. So maybe in the future that'll be part of our, our, um, our possibility, at least. Uh, on that note, several people have committed millions of dollars for the privilege of traveling into space. But I'm wondering, do you think that there's a time that these trips might become more accessible? You know, really what I want to know, Bill, is can I hope to get to travel to space? Or is this really something for my kids or future grandkids? Well, that's a good question, and, and I don't have a simple answer to it. Um, these initial flights are very expensive. We're talking somewhere between two hundred and fifty dollars and $500,000 a seat uh, to go do this. That's obviously going to restrict this to very wealth, wealthy passengers, space tourists, if you will, and government agencies that are buying space on the, on the spacecraft. I mean, the whole point is if they can launch enough missions, they can bring the cost down. Can they get it down to the point where a flight costs maybe what a, say, a world ocean cruise or something like that cost, where more people could take advantage of it? I think that's years away. That's the goal. But of course, that also assumes they don't have any you know, major catastrophic failures that could drive their business back down. Uh, and that's, that's all TBD. So I think initially and for several years, this is going to be a rich person's game. But if it all goes well, they hope to get the cost down where more people can afford to fly. Uh, I feel like we shouldn't leave Elon Musk entirely out of this whole conversation. Let's, so let's go ahead and bring in his company, SpaceX, that. because they... Yeah, they announced that they're going to be launching an all-civilian mission into orbit by the end of the year. Um, although he hasn't announced any immediate plans to travel himself, how does Musk's involvement in space travel differ from Branson and Bezos? Well, Branson is purely suborbital. He doesn't send any spacecraft. His, his space plane is not designed to go into orbit or beyond. So it is a strictly up and down uh, uh, spacecraft. So is the new Shepard being built by Blue Origin. Now, one place where Mr. Musk and Mr. Bezos are competing is for orbital space flight. As you all know, and we all know, you know, SpaceX is well established in that field. It's a world leader in building orbit class spacecraft. Well, Bezos is also building those rockets called the New Glenn. It hasn't flown yet, but it's going to in the next year or so. And so then they will be competing head to head. So Branson's not really a part of that. And, and, and Mr. Musk is not competing in that suborbital arena. He is strictly Earth orbit and deep space, you know, back to the moon, eventually on to Mars. Bezos hopes to compete in that arena as well, but he's got a ways to go yet. Bill Harwood, always such a tremendous pleasure to get to talk space with you. Glad to be here.